Hi guys, I'm glad everyone is here. I hope you're enjoying your weekend. Today I'm going to cover a little bit about Long Valley Caldera, Mono Lakes, and uh, Mammoth area. Depending on what scientists you talk to, Long Valley Caldera is either the second or third largest supervolcano in the world. What makes it a supervolcano is the fact that this volcano has rhyolite, the most explosive magma possible. What's unusual about this supervolcano also is the fact that it has a mixture of both rhyolite and basalt. Recently, they have discovered that there is a chamber of magma under Long Valley Caldera, which is 240 cubic miles of semi-molten magma. It's partial melt, about 27% of melt. Its super eruption was a little over uh, 700,000 years ago. That is the location of the Bishop Tuff. Ash deposited there was over 3,300 feet deep. Also in that area is columns of basalt. After its major eruption, the caldera floor dropped somewhere between one to two miles, uh, yeah, creating this huge crater. It only erupted for about six days, scientists feel, or so they think. Ash was deposited all the way to the state of Nebraska, all the way to the west coast of California. The ash deposit is what is in orange. The yellow is the um, Yellowstone deposits. The light green, which you really can't see, that was Mount St. Helens. And down here in the blue, the deposit from the Vales Caldera. You can also see here we have ash deposits all the way down to uh, the Panhandle of Texas, New Mexico, etc. The most recent eruptions there, which is part of the Long Valley Caldera, was the Mono Inyo Craters. It last erupted, oh, probably about six to seven hundred years ago. This is the area that most scientists feel where the next eruption will occur. It's erupting in a clockwise sickle shape rotation, starting at the bottom here and going up towards the right. Here's an image from Mammoth from Long Valley Caldera. This fault zone that opened up, spread apart as a result of one of the earthquakes during that eruption about 600 to 700 years ago. During the Bishop Tuff eruption, as it's become known, over 3,000 feet of ash, it was so hot, along with pyroclastic flows, pumice, the ash actually welded together. If you look up images, of the Bishop Tuff. You'll notice some areas of uh, what looks like pinkish rock. You notice a little band of it up here. That is rhyolite. Some more there. That is rhyolite. In the 1980s, they noticed that the volcano was starting to wake up. In 1989, they noticed that a resurgent dome was growing. Going to Google Earth, here we can see, drawn out in purple, one of those resurgent domes. And right on the edge of it is the Hot Creek Trout Hatchery. They also have a geothermal power plant in this location. And we're going to do a view of this resurgent dome across the street from um, the trout plant. And there it is, right there, right there. Exiting the street view, we're going to look at, yeah, the trout farm. And we're going to look at this creek. This is Hot Creek. Um, a lot of people have made for themselves little self-enclosed areas of rocks to create a pool of water that they can bathe in and dozens of people 
have been killed. They get into the water and all of a sudden the volcano starts acting up and they're cooked alive. Dozens of people have died in this area. Kind of reminds me of the movie Dante's uh, Volcano, I believe it was called, where there was a hot pole and people jumped into the water and um, yeah, it started boiling and then they, yeah, they cooked, they died. Another interesting fact is back in 2006, three mammoth uh, ski patrollers, they died after falling into a volcanic vent. They evidently were putting up snow fences around this hot vent where CO2 gases were coming up about 20 feet deep. That's how deep the snow was. And there's been different reports about how the accident happened. The uh, scientists in charge said it had nothing to do with the volcano. But one of the detectives that investigated the death said that uh, there was hot rocks down at the bottom of this hollowed out cavity and two ski patrol members fell in a third patroller attempted to rescue and perished as well a fourth was injured and um, luckily um, he didn't succumb to the uh, high co2 gases back then the scientists in charge of the mammoth and long valley caldera said that uh, the region had been quiet of volcanic activity for the past six years Hill said the accident was not volcano related. Well, when you have hot rocks melting the snow above, uh, where did they come from? It certainly was not from a barbecue. After the accident where these people died, all access routes to the upper mountain where the accident took place has or was shut down. Again, this is in 2006. Going back to May of 1980, where they had a swarm of earthquakes and the resurgent dome started to grow, there was several that were of a magnitude 6. And the caldera rose 25 centimeters. So that would be about 9.4 inches, almost 5 inches in height. So in 1982, they began an intense effort to monitor the volcano and study all the unrest that is still ongoing there at Long Valley Caldera. You gotta keep everything politically correct, right? After the uh, earthquake storm swarm and the uplift uh, started, they created a new road which was first proposed to be called the Mammoth Escape Route. Um, but, you know, that would probably create too much panic, so they changed the name to the Mammoth Scenic Route. Yeah, after the Mammoth area businesses and landowners complained. Even though it was built as an escape route. Another interesting fact is this is the Caldera Rim. You can actually see the indentation of its eruption where it blew out the mountains. But off over here is Horseshoe Lake. And we also have the Devil's Post Pile. That's a national monument there. But they had trees that died, um, over a hundred acres of trees that died from the CO2 gases that were coming up, just like, um, have been occurring there at Yellowstone. This was discovered between 1989 and 1990. Here's one image of those dead trees. You can see it's the parking lot. We got restrooms, information center, another image of the location of those dead trees, and another image of the dead trees. The Devil's Pile Post is currently closed. Let me bring this out so we can find it up over there. Uh, supposedly the reason that it's closed is because they want to make this area a uh, campground but it's been closed for over a year if not longer here's one image of the devil's pile post you can see the columns and that's because as it cooled they fractured 
And I was looking at how this was laying down. More than likely on the back side, it was still very hot. And they just kind of fell right over. Another image of the Devil's Pile post. And here's an image of the top. They actually have a trail up there where people can walk and view these columns. Most of them have uh, fractured into three to six sides, some seven sides. This um, formation, this basalt lava um, comparison to a person, it's, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. So going back to Google Earth, we'll look at the location of these dead trees and the distance that it is from the uh, rim of the caldera. And then we'll go up to uh, Mono Inyo Craters. This is the area that they feel is going to be where the next location is. And there's a small island here that was created because of uh, volcanic activity. Yeah, and it poked itself up above the lake. Poha Island, I believe it's called. Again, depending on what scientist you talk to, uh, they feel that this eruption occurred between 550 and 600 years ago. And again, somewhere along this chain, this was caused by dike intrusion. This is where they feel that the next eruption will occur. Recent earthquakes I marked out. Let me bring this down. And there's a fault zone down here. Most of the magma uh, looks like it comes from the south, moves up um, under the ground into the caldera location. But the recent earthquakes in the last week have been close to the Laurel Convict Fault Zone. They have another fault zone here where we have spreading, but I couldn't find a name for that fault zone. This one here on the right is the Laurel Convict Fault Zone, and this is the location of the recent earthquakes. The largest, I believe, was a magnitude 3.0, I want to say. And then going closer, um, right through here, you can see this valley. And this is also an area of spreading. There was quite a few earthquakes actually on both sides of this valley. Yeah, 3.0. Now that one was on um, the 25th of this month. Today is November 28th. Jumping back to the uh, tree kill, uh, first noted in 1990, the tree kill total was 170 acres. The gas in the soil composed of 20 to 90 percent of carbon dioxide, CO2. Summertime exposure to high levels of CO2 at Horseshoe Lake area may result from lying directly on the ground or digging pits um, in the ground, walking through the area in the summertime is safe for children and dogs, as long as their heads stay above ground level. Don't that make you feel good? In the winter, they're saying that the CO2 levels can build up beneath the snowpack, and the CO2 gas will preferably escape around buildings, through tree wells, and through depressions around large rocks. Such areas should obviously be avoided. Yeah, but how many people know that? And they evidently have put up signs, but how often have you seen where signs are actually covered in snow because of a blizzard? Because CO2 gas is heavier than air, it can collect in snow banks, depressions, and poorly ventilated enclosures such as cabins, tents, um, posing a potential danger to people. Breathing air with more than 7% of CO2 can cause unconsciousness and death. Talks about pits dug in snowbanks, and I think about the kids making snow caves. And here it says, in 2006, three members of the Mammoth Mountain Ski Patrol 
You know they were educated about CO2, and etc. While trying to reconfigure fencing around a no known femoral. Now that is a vent which steam and volcanic gases come up through. And yet uh, Mr. Hill, the scientist in charge, says the deaths were not related to the volcano. Here's a current list um, as of yesterday of all the earthquakes. Let's see if I can update it, refresh it. These are the earthquakes that USGS is reporting. Six earthquakes as of yesterday, nothing from today. Largest being a magnitude 1.3. And most of them are pretty darn shallow. 2.84, 3.79. Uh, 4.09, 5.75 kilometers in depth. So three kilometers would be 1.8 miles below sea level. All earthquakes are measured from sea level. On the 26th, there was 17 earthquakes. Looks like the largest maybe um, a 2.7. And on the 25th, there was 11 the largest being the 3.0, which I showed you. So here we have another image of the more unlikely location for the next eruption. And I'll bring it down for you. And that's all I have for you right now. If you have any thoughts or comments or questions, please put those down below. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you very much for watching. Please stay safe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.